You guys got a chance to see uh, Harvey, you got a chance to yep. see Thompson. Can you discuss, I guess, with both of them specifically, sure. the things about their games that you like and kind of the, you know, how you, you know, your feelings about them stepping yeah. into their role? I uh, was very proud of how they approached the, the situation, approached the news. Um, I didn't feel like the moment was too big for them. You know, Tyler getting his first start in college and then Jay Brown playing a bunch of reps. Uh, I thought they handled it very well. There's been a consistent maturation in both of them over the past eight months. And I think they were ready for the moment. They went out there and played really, really well. Um, they both have a um, differing styles of player, but both very effective at what we're asking them to do. And I think just uh, that experience, you know, kind of being thrust on them, they're going to even have more confidence going into Saturday now they've gotten their first significant amount of playing time under their belt. Do either of them have a particular similarity with Cayman that maybe they've you know, picked up from right. the game or maybe that he's kind of constructed? Well, I think one of the cool things is just the, the way Ruck prepares, and they've gotten to see him do that, and they went through the same preparation process too that, that I think helped them. Um, but I think they're different kind of players. They're really good players. Um, and they both have, we'll use them in slightly different ways, um, but very effective. And I think just getting that, you know, the first time you're ever thrust into playing a ton, you know, there's probably a little bit of, you know, whatever. But I think just moving forward, they're just going to cut it loose and play because they're both really good players. Stay, hang on, this too. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, it just seems like Charlotte wasn't able to run the ball against you guys, but they were able to get some plays. Sure. How do you feel like the overall assessment? Yeah, so the – yep. So my first my first note, and even what I said in the staff meeting yesterday, is way too many explosives. Uh, there were eight explosive plays, 80% of their yardage, 80% of their first downs were off of eight plays. So just the rest of the game, I thought the guys played lights out, um, but we can't have those, you know, explosive plays – Four of them were simply an issue of leverage. We're supposed to be outside leverage on the guy. If we have outside leverage on those four of those plays, there's no play. So just a learning experience, you know. Uh, we're in game two, just making sure that as the formations change, as the looks change, the leverage relative to where you are on the field should be consistent. And just play with the proper leverage, play with your help, you know, those kind of things. Because on two of those four, we had the kid doubled. So you just play with the proper leverage. You've got somebody inside of you. Just play outside, and we have no issues. So just showing that globally as a unit, because I don't want ever us to have an explosive play against us, and people start wondering why that happened. So we address those in front of everybody on defense so they all see it. Nobody panics. Okay, it was simply a matter of leverage. He lost his one-on-one -on -one matchup, whatever the case may be. I keep doing my job because we were this close on probably eight of them with a lot of pressures from the D-line, a lot of pressures from the linebackers, and uh, just play with leverage and depth and all that. Go over to Tyler and Jay Braun. You say there's different players. They do. They look different and everything. But yep. Kind of strikes different. Right now, are you just letting them – they go out there and they have straight series or doing everything? And yeah. And you going to start maybe figuring out what uh, A little – so, so – our you fit in? Yep. So what, what we do is every Thursday we have a meeting called Playing the Players as a defensive staff. So we go through how we're going to play each guy that's in their room, okay? Um, we played 25 guys on Saturday, which is awesome. Right, we talked about playing a lot more players. We did it. And even early in the game, we just had guys rolling through. And what I do as a play caller, when I know Tyler's in the game, there might be certain things that I'll go to a little bit more if Jabron's in the game. Same thing with Jabron. I know Jabron's in the game. I know he does this really well. I do those kind of things and showcase those kind of things. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when I try to do that across the board, especially with the front seven, the things that we're going to do might look nuanced based on who's in the game. How do you balance that and also trying to kind of figure out what they can do? Because practice is right. one thing, the game's a little bit different. So maybe something you would typically run for Jayron, try running it for Tyler just to see if he can do it. Or yeah, there should be. dangerous to try, try that in a game? Uh, I've done it for a long time, so. That's what I, that's how I've called plays for a long, long time. What I mean by dangerous, very quickly to clarify, meaning that trying things, testing things in the course of a Yeah, we'll do that throughout the week, yep, and get a feel for even all the way through. We got on Friday, we got 144 walkthrough reps. So we're seeing things that they can do and just – I always play quarterback during the walkthroughs, so I see their eyes and I know 
who's got the confidence in certain calls, who lights up when they see a certain call. So I put that in my mental Rolodex. Okay, Jay Bron's in, we're doing X, Y, and Z. Tyler's in, we're going to do these kind of things. So we just play that game uh, the whole way through. Yeah. And, the same, and the same thing on the interior. Like if Ritzy and Trav are in the game together, I'm doing these things. Scoob and Josh are in the game together, I'm doing these things. So it's just repetition and that's how it works. Coach Collins, on the topic of consistency and maturation, can you talk about just Jafari Ritzy and how his development has been displayed these past yeah. games? He's already been the country with five sacks. Can you okay. talk about him and what he's been doing for your team? Yep. So I, I think, first of all, Javari is a tremendous young man. Um, every UNC alumnus and every student of this university should be proud that he's representing this great place. Um, he works so hard. He has such a good demeanor. He's so positive. He works so hard. Uh, he prepares so well. Uh, the one sack he got late in the third quarter was he was, again, the guy that was setting up the play for somebody else. But he got to the top end of that rush and used his technique, spun back, and he was rewarded with the sack, even though he was the one in the moment was being unselfish. I think it was to get Tyler free. Tyler did come free, but it forced the quarterback to move, and Javari stepped in there and made a great play. Um, and then on the first sack that he got, he was the punch contain player into the boundary. The pressure flushed him. He kept playing technique and makes that great play. So um, I think it's just accumulation of execution, Preparation, being a tremendous athlete, uh, has all come together, and I'm just so proud of him to get rewarded for all of his work and who he is as a young man. Do you, Jeff, do you, do you think that his leadership is also showing up outside the field as well? I think it always does. I think it always has. I mean, I think he's been one of the guys that's kind of been, like Jeremy would know, been a constant in this program as a leader, as a role model, um, somebody that is just very poised, uh, practices hard, plays hard is just an all-around, just a great dude. Jeff, you made it a point when you got hired whenever it was January, I guess it was January, to, to watch the defense to really break it down, yep. the defense you were inheriting. Yep. In terms of Ritzy and the player you inherited with sure. him, what did you – what sort of evolution has this been for him from the guy you were watching on film from last year to right. this dude you've seen in these first two games? Like, it seems like – And I think it's kind of just been – a consistent process. I dropped this stat yesterday. Since I got, I got here in January, we've had over 8,000 reps, whether it be walkthrough, practice reps, scrimmage reps, whatever the case may be, that we've gotten to go through how we play our defense. The schematics, the techniques, the fundamentals. So they have all of those cumulative reps. Now they can just play free, see what the offense is doing, and go out and fly around and have fun. Because I want to, on game days, I want to be the one that does the thinking. I want them to cut it loose and play free and play fast. And I think you're seeing Javari do that, executing at a high level, playing the concepts of the defense, playing with great fundamentals, but then being able to take that next step and express himself and make really good plays. Now, the celebration after the second one, he may have expressed himself a little longer than maybe needed, but he's having fun playing the game and he's, he's playing at a very, very high level. Jeff, what's the challenge at linebacker to build depth? Uh, I mean, obviously you've got two sure. studs there, but behind yep. them it's been kind of a struggle. Like sure, yeah, and one of the, the first pieces is um, Amari and Power are playing at a really, really high level. I don't, did we announce Amari as the player of the game, player of the week? Yep, so well-deserved, uh, played lights out, had a ton of production. Um, Power Eccles, I think everybody – associated with Carolina football knows the kind of player he is. So that's been the challenge, and we've gotten, uh, I think the, the young backers got, I think, 10 to 16 reps on Saturday, and I think uh, LaValle had maybe eight in the previous game. So just throwing them in there, getting them exposure at it, um, you know, and just keep building their confidence, keep building their growth. Because um, when they're at practice, they're, they're playing really, really well and just – Throwing them into the fire a little more will, I think, help their maturation and growth. But they're both they're both really good players. Ashton Woods a really good player. Cade Law is going to be a really good player. So we've got we've got depth. Uh, talk about with, with Chip about the game slowing down for Harold. Do you see that with Mavali and Short and those guys? I do. 
Yep, yeah, and the way, and you guys probably haven't been at practice in a while just to see how we do the walkthroughs, but they are, we try to get a ton of reps in a 10 minute period just to over, uh, overload them with the, the scheme so they can execute it and they can just do it without even thinking. That's the part that we want them to be at. Uh, Amari's there, power is there, where they hear the call, they know exactly all the adjustments, checks, and they go play fast. I think that next group is right there on the cusp of being at that level. Matt was talking about the physical transformation Travis has made. I guess it was towards a 370 in January. Yep. Yeah, he weighed at 329. Right. And that's about the timeline you've been here, I guess. Sure. What have you seen in terms of just a physical standpoint, a mental standpoint of, of how Travis has evolved? Yeah, just uh, the, the eight months that I've known Trav, just his maturation, how he's matured, how he's approached the game is just – just been a consistent improvement climb um, and just the way he's playing right now. I've been having him listed down on my list right here to make sure I talk about is he's executing at a high level, playing within the framework of the defense, but still being very productive and being very disruptive. Um, Cause a lot of the times when we're making tackles for loss, it's Trav that's just destroying the play. We go on the goal. We had two goal line stands on Saturday. Travis Shaw is at the nose just taking up both gaps. Um, even though he's 40 pounds lighter, he's still a big, powerful man that is shooting back there and just creating disruption. They can't run the ball uh, in there. And the other one I had down was Dez Evans. I thought Dez Evans played amazingly. Down in the goal line stands as well, Dez Evans, him, Travis, Josh Harris, uh, just ridiculous amount of push uh, to keep him out of the end zone. So um, been very pleased with both of them and really – uh, the entire defensive line, playing with fundamentals, playing with technique, playing with an edge, playing with an attitude, and just building walls so that our guys can run through and make plays. Was getting his weight down ever a conversation you guys had? Earlier? Oh, absolutely. Guess, absolutely. What was your advice on that? I mean, are you surprised he got down 40 pounds? I mean, no, I just think Ted Monachino, and you got, have gotten to know Ted, is an amazing defensive line coach. And when somebody that's coached in the NFL for 16 years and coached some of the best of the best say, hey, Trav, you get down to 330, you can be in these conversations. When he says it, it has the gravitas, it has the weight um, and the motivation behind it. And then our, our nutrition staff, Amber and Izzy and the rest of them, they do a ridiculously good job, uh, not only with their guidance and their expertise, but their relationships with the guys and the trust factor um, that they have and knowing that they have their best interest at heart. And if you follow their advice and instruction, you're going to be able to accomplish it. And the other one, to your point, is Marcus Allen. So Marcus Allen got the second award for the defense, the Menace Award. Marcus Allen made some key open field tackles on Saturday that I don't know if he makes last year. He's 10 pounds heavier. He's more confident in his physicality. He's stronger. And I think he would self-admittedly say that those 10 pounds that he's added, and it's been really good weight, led to him being able to make those tackles. One was a third and three or fourth, whatever, third and three on the goal line, and he makes a huge open field tackle. Great technique, great fundamentals. We executed the call perfectly, switching off the routes. But then stopping somebody from getting in the end zone, that ain't an easy task, and Marcus did it. Two-part question on Caleb Cost here. Um, your general thoughts on how he's played so far. Yeah. And also, are, with some of the mistakes we've seen, the, the evidence of a guy that missed spring and is still a very young player at one. So I think so, so. two of the leverage plays were Caleb, but I, I made sure I made a big deal yesterday. Caleb Cost played really well Saturday. Like if you watch the totality of how Caleb Cost played, he played a really good football game. There's two plays that he wishes he could have back, two plays he wishes he could have played with proper leverage. We'll get those things fixed. But the other plays that Caleb was in, he was playing really good. And there's when you play DB at this level, there's going to be some plays that you're going to get beat one-on-one, -on -one and everybody sees it. Brush that aside, put the ball down, let's learn from it, and let's go. But Caleb Koss obviously missed some of the spring. I think we had him, what, two practices? maybe three, whatever. Um, so just the fundamentals techniques and just playing with the leverages that we require in the system, he's going to get it and be a big-time player for us. And if you just watch every single play, you would say 21 had a really good game.
DBs have to have a short memory. A hundred percent. He and I had that conversation, not to quote Ted Lasso, but I talked about being a goldfish yesterday during stretch lines with Caleb. Like, hey, it's over. I'm past it. We've learned from it. Keep it moving and let's put the ball down and let's go. He's a baseball guy. They inherently have short memories as well. Okay. Have you seen that from him? I, I don't, I'm not. I'm, I'm saying like from I'm, short memory with what you're doing, with, with, with yeah. some of the mistakes he's making. Well, I think, uh, you know, when you first start getting your, what's this, his third start now in college, I think the further you get, that's an easier task. I mean, I'm, what, 50-something years old, and it's still t- hard for me to let some things go as well. Like the last touchdown that they got should have never happened. We had bad communication. They go for a touchdown. I didn't sleep Saturday night. So even though I preached trying to be a goldfish, I wasn't a goldfish after that. I was still pretty upset about it. So, Jeff, in terms of – I know we've been talking a lot about the defensive line, but in terms of the guys that you have been able to use through two games, I think it was nine guys got in at Minnesota. Yep. Eleven guys the other day. Yep. I think the most snaps in one play against Charlotte was 32 yep. on the D-line. I mean – in terms of the freshness early in the season, I would think you have to that's, set it up exactly. That's like. right on target. That's what Coach Brown and I talked about back in January, and Coach Brown has harped on it the whole last eight months, and everybody's bought into it. All the coaches have bought into it. The players have bought into it. There's an unselfishness to that group that's really cool, and they're understanding, hey, if I'm whoever X, Y, and Z – I'm playing 30 plays or 40 plays. Well, those 30 and 40 plays are going to be my best because I'm fresh. And I think they've all kind of bought into that style of play, and there's not been a drop-off. Any of those 11 go in, like Rodney Lohr and Joel Starlings played on Saturday, they played winning football. They played really good. Same thing with Jay Bron and Tyler we've already talked about. Um, But it's nice to have a defensive line that has so much depth, so much size, so much quality of play across the entire front. And if we can just keep them rolling, I think it's going to be really good for us. One, one other instance that you had this year is better tackling. Not yes, sir. You mentioned that in, in pre yep. Hudson tackling Mac that one time, one on one, so obviously a great example. How, how do you right. assess the tackling for the first two games? So I, I, the first game, the explosives came because of poor tackling against Minnesota. So the explosives, I think eight of the nine or whatever, six of the seven, were because we missed the tackle at like three or four or five yards. It ended up being explosive. That wasn't the case on Saturday. We had one missed tackle um, on a over the ball route, across the middle, missed the tackle, missed the second tackle. That led to an explosive. The rest of the explosives were not due to missed tackles. And I thought we tackled really well throughout the game at all three levels, which is we just got to keep building on it. The thing when we have our unit meetings uh, almost every day, on Tuesday's practice, there's a huge graphic, tackling and pursuit can be improved every day. So we talk about it. We list the rushing yards that we had against the, in the first game. We list the rushing yards that we had against the second game. Running to the football matters. Tackling in space matters. Gang tackling matters. And we just kind of reinforced that uh, across the whole defense. PFF had you guys for only like three missed tackles Saturday. Is that what? Was that the number that you guys had? I think so. I can't. I don't. I know we had two on that one play. So. What What are just some of your last one? Here. What are some of your just early impressions of studying Central? What they do on offense? Yep. What stands out? Yeah. So the, the, I think the running backs are really good. They've got a big offensive line that's got a lot of uh, starts coming back. Um, 88, the receiver, is long, athletic, really fast, um, and they do a lot of things that can pose problems. So we actually spent the last four hours uh, watching them, game plan them, all those kind of things. Um, But I think it's a really good offense. All right. Thank you, guys.